Former AIG Chairman Maurice Hank Greenberg still owns or controls over 10% of AIG's stock. And uh, from time to time, he asks questions that uh, would be uh, of interest to all of the stockholders, and in this case, to many of the U.S. taxpayers who now own some 79% of the company. Yesterday, Mr. Greenberg wrote a letter to AIG. The Securities and Exchange Commission released the text of the letter today. Here are some of the questions that Mr. Greenberg is seeking answers to. Greenberg's letter concerns first the new $152 billion government bailout package for AIG. He asks where $35 billion in cash collateral came from for the purchase of $70 billion of collateralized debt securities. Next, Greenberg asks whether $70 billion worth of collateralized debt securities had been purchased and whether the $35 billion cash collateral was already paid out to collateralized debt security counterparties. Greenberg asks for the identities of CDS counterparties and what else they were paid. Greenberg also asks for how much of the $38 billion New York Federal Reserve lending facility for residential mortgage-backed securities has been withdrawn, how much was paid to counterparties, and whether the sum was paid or posted as collateral. Greenberg asks how much remaining exposure AIG has in securities lending business above the amount drawn on the New York Fed facility. These are all very, very good questions. They're certainly good questions if you own 10.19% of the stock in the company, as Mr. Greenberg does or controls. And now, since the taxpayers own 79.9% of the stock in the company, there are questions that we want to answer, too. Bully for you, Mr. Greenberg. The China Insurance Regulatory Commission, or known by its acronym CERC, has tightened rules on the launch of investment-related products by property insurers in China, reflecting the regulatory agency's concerns about the solvency of some insurers. Property insurers that plan to launch products with both insurance and investment functions must have had a solvency ratio of more than 150 percent in the past four consecutive quarters. The notice posted by the CERC said that a company whose solvency ratio has fallen below 150 percent in the latest quarter must immediately stop selling such products. Before this notice, the regulator restricted all insurers' business activities when their solvency ratio fell below 100 percent. For insurers with solvency ratios between 100 and 150 percent, the regulator monitors their operations and asks them to submit contingency plans to ensure that their solvency is sufficient. The notice was dated on the 20th of November, and the new rules took effect from that day. The Reinsurance Association of America, the group down in Washington presided over by Frank Nutter, came out with their uh, quarterly report. U.S. P&C reinsurers for the nine months ending September 30th increased net premiums written by $1.1 billion, or 6%, compared with the same period in 07. A survey of 20 reinsurers' statutory underwriting results conducted by the RAA found the group wrote $19 billion in net premium, compared with $17.9 billion for the same period last year. The combined ratio, however, had deteriorated to 104.2 percent from 94.1 percent. The RAA said that the drop in the combined ratio is attributable to a 75-point loss ratio and an expense ratio of 29.2 percent. The top five companies in the RAA ranked by net premiums written for the nine months were National Indemnity Corporation at $3.6 billion, Transatlantic Putnam Re at $2.8 billion, Munich American Re $1.7 billion, Odyssey American Re $1.5 billion, and Swiss Re America $1.49 billion. Here's some good news relating to pirates. The Miami-based Oceana Cruise Line yesterday confirmed a failed pirate attack on its ocean liner Nautica in the Gulf of Aden over the weekend saying the ship was fired upon but managed to outrun its assailants. Two skiffs deemed potentially hostile attempted to intercept the cruise ship's course from a range of about a thousand yards. The captain of the Nautica took evasive maneuvers. He immediately brought the ship to flank speed and was able to outrun the two skiffs. One of the skiffs that had been viewed as potentially hostage fired eight rifle shots and one bazooka shot. I guess that changed the category from potentially hostile to hostile. 
The Nautica continued to outrun the skiffs. No one aboard the cruise ship was hurt, and no damage was sustained. Swiss Re has cut 120 jobs worldwide in IT and financial markets. The company is confirming this yesterday. The spokesman would not confirm a report that the group may make redundancies in its client markets and products division. A Swiss daily newspaper called Cash reported that Swiss Re was cutting around 200 jobs in total, including 100 in its client markets and products unit. A Swiss Re spokesman confirmed that the reinsurer had made 80 redundancies globally in IT, including 25 in Switzerland, and had cut 40 jobs worldwide in its financial market segment, of which 24 were in Switzerland. There's a story running right now saying that Delta Airlines, which uh, recently uh, completed its merger with Northwest Airlines, uh, will systematically will cut system-wide capacity by as much as 8% in the next year as the global recession, recession continues to weaken the demand in flying. Given that, this story is very interesting. British Airways confirmed this morning that it is in merger talks with Australian carrier Qantas, the UK flag carrier, which had already uh, has agreed to an all-share merger with the Iberia Linnaeus Areas de España, said talks with the Spanish airline are continuing. Uh, BA also back in August filed for antitrust immunity for a tie-up with American Airlines and Iberia. So now they're repeating, BA is, what they did in 1993 when they bought and sold a 25 per stake in Qantas as it tried to gain a presence on the London to Australia route. However, Australia's Qantas Sales Act dictates that no foreign airline can own more than 25 percent of the airline. So what BA is trying to do now is they're trying to merge with Qantas via a dual listed company structure. We'll try to find out some more about this. First of all, it's very interesting that uh, they're interested in getting involved in that in a time when uh, the recession seems to be hitting air travel severely. And secondly, we'd like to learn a little bit more as to how they can thwart the Australian uh, legislative intent there by merging via a dual listed company structure. Inquiring minds want to know. We'll try to find out. Stock market is down. It's up. It's up. It's up about 171 points. If we have any breaking news, we'll come back and tell you. If not, we'll see you tomorrow.